All right, I had done some uh, op amp testing um, about the differences between uh, fake op amps and regular op amps, uh, official op amps, whatever. And they suggested that I maybe uh, not talk about fake so much and talk about more about measurement techniques for what are the various things that you look for in op amps, right? I think I covered the offset uh, voltage fairly well. Uh, if you have a, a differential on the input, that equates to, to some error voltage on the output. You want the inputs, the plus and the minus inputs, to both be the same always. And if there's a small change there, you see that change on the output. And now most, you know, if you have a gain of one, then that, that change is exactly a one-to-one -one thing. But if you have a gain of 10, well, then it gets multiplied up. But let's say you have a gain of 1,000. If you have a one millivolt uh, offset, in the op amp, which is a very, very typical number, it equals a one volt offset on the output. So that's that's really awful. The other thing uh, that I looked at uh, was the slew rate of an op amp. How fast does it change on a, on a step? Um, so that's that's one of those things that you look at the data sheets of op amps. Um, what we're going to be looking at today is, um, I, I guess you would call it the the the. Uh, bandwidth of the op amp or the open loop gain or the closed loop gain, those those type of things. We're going to be taking a look at how fast can the can the op amp be operated. And it's basically a sine wave in and a sine wave output. You want the the uh, sine wave to, to, to go through. Um, if you have a one megahertz sine wave, you, you want the one megahertz to get through good. And uh, uh, you will find that there is a cutoff frequency, a frequency which the op amps can't go past, right? So you might have a very high performance op amp, maybe for audio. It only needs to go up to say 200 kilohertz. You know, 20 kilohertz is the upper end of hearing, but you want more than that. So you, you want your op amp to go up to maybe 200 kilohertz or something like that um, to catch the transients and stuff. And a little, maybe a little bit more is better. If you're just doing a uh, low level um, scientific measurements, like you're you're measuring the uh, making a transimpedance amplifier for photodiode and stuff, then you're kind of looking at DC. You're not really looking at AC, you're looking at DC. So th so so op amps like the OP07 uh, is not a very fast op amp at all. It's actually quite a slow op amp, but it has a very low input offset gain and offset voltage and, and uh, it has good gain and it, you know it's good temperature stability and all those other things. So um, so what I'm, what I'm kind of getting to is this this is just one parameter of an op amp and it's not a measure of goodness. Um, it's a measure of what this one does. Um, and depending on your circuit, you may want a fast one, you may want a slow one. This particular measurement may be very critical in your application, and this particular measurement may be, you don't really care in, 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 uh, in your circuit. Maybe you have a DC circuit, and then you really don't care much about this. Um, and uh, so, yeah, so let's take a look at what we're going to measure. Okay, so this is the circuit we're going to be measuring. It is an inverting amplifier with a gain of 10, so a gain of minus 10 to be, to be precise. And you have an input and an output. We're going to be using a, a, a signal generator, a, a sine wave. We're going to be inputting a sine wave. And then we're going to be looking at the output with an oscilloscope. We'll look at the output with channel two. We're also going to be monitoring the input with channel one. So we can look at channel one, channel two. So what we're going to be looking at is the, is, is the actual uh, difference. So if you have one volt here, you expect 10 volts here, right? And so we're going to be looking at gain. And so we need these two numbers. This divided by this is our gain. And then we're going to change the generator for different frequencies. We're going to start at maybe 1 kilohertz, and then 10 kilohertz, 100 kilohertz, a megahertz. We're going to be stepping along the way, okay? And that's a tedious measurement. But uh, if you have it automated in software and do uh, GPIB control of your instruments and stuff, uh, you, can do, you can do that in an automated process. Or if you're lucky enough to have an oscilloscope like I have, it's built into the oscilloscope. So that's what I'm going to be using. But you can certainly do it other ways. And um, if you're interested in, uh, in these things, this measurement that we're going to be making is called the Bode plot, B-O-D-E. And I did a, a, a video, number 848. If you want to look up Bode plots, uh, it, 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 it's a measurement of both the gain of the 
device and the phase relationship. So it, it, as the signals go through here, they, they, they can be in phase and they can start to go out of phase as, as you reach higher and higher frequencies. And so the Bode plot measures both the, uh, both the gain of the system and the phase of the system. Um, and this instrument will do that automatically for us. So yeah, so let's get that set up. All right, so um, we are going to be taking a look at uh, something called a Bode plot. And so this is a Rigel MSO um, 5072, but it's been uh, converted into a 5354. I don't remember. Anyway, it's, 300, it's 350 megahertz oscilloscope, four channel. Um, don't remember the part number when it gets upgraded. Anyway, there is, it's a touch screen display and you can touch uh, in the lower right, lower left hand corner and you can get things that are automatically in there. One of the things in the bottom uh, three over says Bodhi. So we will click on Bodhi and we now comes up uh, with Bodhi on the, on the right hand side. And we will need to set up the parameters, okay? So we will be setting up the amplitude and uh, that we want to start at. So. Uh, so we want to stop at one megahertz, and we're going to start at uh, one kilohertz. So we're going to we're going to go between one kilohertz and one megahertz, and it's going to take ten steps per decade. So it's going to automatically step through everything, um, and we're going to set the amplitude to one volt. One volt. Okay, and. Um, all right, so that's all set up. Uh, I need to set up my scope probe. So scope probe number one, I'm gonna say has an attenuation of 10. Oops, not 20, 10. And my scope probe number two has an attenuation of 10. I wish it would remember these things, but it doesn't. All right, so now we've got that going on. Let's close this. Uh, oops, let's go back to our Bode plot. I lost it. All right, and um, we are just gonna have to hit start here. It's very, very easy. All right, and you can kind of see uh, behind the scenes there, uh, you can see the sine waves, and uh, one of them is the input and one of, the, one of those is the output. I think the yellow is the uh, input, yeah, and the uh, cyan is the output. So right now they're right on top of one another, so um, it is applying a gain of 10 factor in the instrument. So uh, I think what it does is it adjusts it so those two um, sine waves are the same size. And so then it calculates the gain that way. And you can watch the uh, little numbers there on the plot. It has a frequency gain and phase. So as it's stepping across, you can watch the frequency change and you can watch the gain change. And uh, it is uh, going down. All right, so I made a rookie mistake. Uh, you can say, well, how come you only have a gain of 0.1? I thought you're supposed to have a gain of 10. Well, I forgot to turn on the power supply on my circuit. <laughs> so if you see this, it looks like it's doing something, but it's just the resistors. The, the op amp's not doing anything, it's just the resistors. Uh, so I will turn on the, uh, I will turn on the uh, power supply um, and hit start. I like to leave in my mistakes in my videos. Uh, I think it's a better learning tool that way. Um, if you always show everything in the perfect world, people, people are always scratching their head at home. Well, how come it worked for him, but it didn't work for me? How come I'm such a dummy and, and he always gets it right, right? Um, no, you, you know, like I said, don't be afraid to fail and uh, don't be afraid to do dumb things and don't be afraid to ask questions. Um, all right. So as you can see here, now we have a gain of, uh, of uh, 19.7. So gain of 10 is 20 dB, right? And so we're right here at 20 dB and we're going along and we can see that the phase is starting to change. Um, since it's a, a gain of negative one, you're gonna have a phase of 180 degrees. Um, so it starts at 180 and then as the uh, op amp reaches its point where I just can't go fast enough, I can't go fast enough, uh, then the uh, gain will go down and the phase will change. 
And there we go, we're complete. So um, you can see I can use my cursor here. Uh, if you look at, it, we started out at, at, at 20 dB, so let's look at where 17 dB is. So 17 dB is about there. So at about 158 kilohertz, this particular op amp uh, is 3 dB down. And I think that's a point that normally gets published. Um, it's either 3 dB or 6 dB. I think 3 dB is the right number for this. So there you go. We had 158 kilohertz, uh, uh, 3 dB point, and our phase was 143 degrees. All right. So um, I hope this helps. Um, obviously, the setup's going to be very, very different if you do it. Your, your instruments are going to be different than mine, and your procedures might be different than mine. But what I really want to do is I want to go through a series of videos. I have a, a bunch of um, op amps, and I'm going to put them in the circuit, and they will always have a gain of 10, and I will run this plot, and the plot will always be between 1 kilohertz and 1 megahertz. And uh, yeah, let's, let's, I'm going to do this off, uh, off camera. And then uh, uh, well, let's take a look at the data that I get. This is the uh, old 741 op amp. LM358, very popular op amp. TL072, very popular and a little bit newer. LF353, a little bit rare. LF411, you see this quite a bit for fast applications. LT1055, another kind of a rare op amp. JRC4556, high current output. NE5332, great for audio applications. Here's the fake 5332. OP07, great for input offset voltage. And the fake one. All right, so we've just measured the uh, the uh, a bunch of op amps, right? And uh, so here's an OP07 data sheet. Let's see if we can find that uh, that measurement in this data sheet, and uh, show you what that's called and what it looks like here. Um, so it's basically this plot here. Um, so this is called the closed loop frequency response for various gain configurations. So we had a gain of 10, right? And uh, these are in dB, so we had a, a dB gain of 20. So this is, the, uh, this is the line that we were following. It goes straight across, and then it falls. And this one is rolling off around, uh, oh, it's probably 3 dB down, around 100 kilohertz, something like that. Um, now you can see that at uh, a different gain, so this is a gain of 1, 0 dB, it's a little bit faster. At a gain of 10, it's a little bit slower. A gain of, a gain of uh, 40 dB, it's slower still. A gain of 60 dB, it's slower still. So there is a gain frequency bandwidth, right? There, there, and so the higher the gain, um, the lower the frequency, right? And there is this straight line here that is the uh, the the uh, response that uh, you follow, and if you if you continue with that all the way up to uh, infinite gain, which is theoretical, uh, that would be the open loop gain, right? And so you 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 could say, um, yeah, uh, the very very best we could get, you know, would be a certain uh, gain but it would have no bandwidth at all, that kind of thing. Um, anyway, so there's, there's one. Uh, here is the, I just talked about it. Here is the open loop, open loop uh, gain. Uh, so it's gonna look very, very similar, right? Our 20 dB uh, went this way and then it kind of ran into here and went down, right? And that happened right here around 100k. So it's it's basically the same graph. It, they just take it up all the way to like when it finally, finally, finally fails. Um, they're getting up here around 105, 110, maybe 115 uh, a dB open loop gain. Right, kind of theoretical number. Okay, so that was just a look at a bunch of op amps. Measured the Bode plot of those op amps, closed loop gain, and phase, and uh, yeah, thought it. 
I uh, thought uh, it was fun and uh, it gives me a kind of a database of when I go to choose an op amp, I'll know which ones do what.